does this look pretty to you? It's pretty. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, but like, is it interesting? You know, what's going on in it? I don't really know what to look. Where am I supposed to look? Am I supposed to look here? Am I supposed to look there? Okay, but like, what about this? Whoa, I, there's... Pff, whoa. Okay, well, okay. See, like, this isn't like... I mean, it's pretty, but like... But like, imagine this, though. <laughs> like, come on, what would you would rather be? Would you rather be this, or would you rather be this? Would you rather be this? Or would you rather be this? So what makes these better than these over here? Is it the rendering? Is it the anatomy? Is it the color? Well, no. I mean, if I made all of this to the same rendering skill as what I have now compared to what I had then, it would still be boring. I still wouldn't really know what to look at. It's not really telling me anything. It's not guiding my eye anywhere. Sure, it would be more pretty, but it's not more interesting. It's not more impactful. What it's missing is composition. Composition is a game changer for your art. I'm serious, like, for real? <laughs> when I learned about composition, and I realized what I was doing was, was boring and lackluster, it, it just changed me. It was a total game changer. It was like on the same level of game changing as form. It is so vital if you want to learn how to improve your artwork. I think, I think you, won't, you will not regret watching this. And so today, as an example of good composition and how to use it, how to go by making it, and how knowing what the heck to do or what that even means, all this jazz, I'm going to be using my most recent painting, which is of Melania. I love her. So, composition. Coming up with a composition with her was actually a little bit, like, admittedly difficult because I didn't go into this with the idea that I was trying to make something interesting. She was actually a doodle <laughs> that I just started. But my issue was that, well, despite her pose being cool, the way she's standing is very one-to-one -to, -one to the cameras, which usually is boring. So in order to come up with an interesting composition for this, I, I more resorted to the way I, I'm going to frame her body and using relationships between objects, shapes, and invisible lines and color. And I'm going to point all those out to you. So composition is really, really cool because it is essentially all trickery. They are invisible lines and everything that makes and tricks our, our little psychological brains into organizing it in a way that is pleasing to the eyes. So it all starts with knowing what your focus point is. And what a focus point is, is essentially, it's the part of the piece, whatever is the most important, the most impactful of the piece. It's usually the face, it's mo m most of the time. Unless it's like a scenery or something, it's, it's, it's usually the face. With Melania, she has her face as a big focus point but so is her abdomen because I wanted to show like the rot but it's not as rendered as her face or even her arm so here is what's the most important so this is the focus point but with this starting out as just a sketch I need to know where to start like how how am I even going to position her to come up with an interesting composition and why I put her there and not just like in the center is actually because anyone recognize this pattern anyone know what this is so this is called rule of thirds. It is the most basic, beginner, yet so solid compositional template probably that exists in the art world. And for a lot of people that don't understand it, they'll use it wrong. They think um, like, oh, okay, I see the blocks. I'll fill in this block and then I'll fill in this block or I'll fill in the center block because it's in the middle and that's, that's what's cool. So no, 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 y'all got it. I'll go backwards. Rule of thirds, these are just guidelines to find four specific points that our eyes want to naturally gravitate to. It's where the lines cross that matter. So we gotta divide each side, even little segments, and find where these lines cross to find these, these four little pointy points. So why these points matter and why they work is actually two psychological reasons. The biggest thing is that we are biological creatures. Nothing in nature is perfect. We want to look at things that are imperfect, things that aren't in the center, because everything that's too centered is unnatural, that's man-made, and it doesn't look right. So our, our just subconscious doesn't want to look in that direction. Instead, our subconscious would rather look at things that are off-center. So we actually want to avoid the center. The center should just be noise for most of the part. The actual focus should be in one of these crossing points. The other reason why this works, it's another psychology thing. We pay attention to our peripherals a lot because, you know, back when society didn't exist and we were hunter-gatherers and all that shit, we had to watch our backs because we might get eaten or something. And you can actually do this. If you sit in a dark room and you look at something directly, it's like invisible. But if you look off to the side and you look at your peripherals, you could suddenly see that thing and that you actually see in your peripheral is a lot clearer in the dark. And so if you were to look in the center here, guess what? 
Guess where these four little crossing things go around? Your peripherals. Check out that, past the peripherals. It gets a little blurry, but you know, it's still in view. We could still see it pretty clearly. And then beyond that, almost just gone to us. It's just the corner of our eyes and we don't really pay attention to it that much. And look at that. All the important stuff is in the light blue and the medium blue, is in this area. Look at that. And rule of thirds does that subliminally. How neat is that? Simplicity leads to complexity. You wanna stay simple. So I started simple with rule of thirds because I know that's gonna pave the way for me to come up with complex compositional stuff. But to really bring this piece to life, rule of thirds isn't enough. If I just had rule of thirds, it'd be quite stale and, and pretty boring. So we, we gotta do some more in order to make it interesting. Okay, so how am I supposed to make it an interesting composition if that's not enough? So going back to psychology, we are pattern seeking brains. So I'm going to be making patterns in my piece. Now I'm not gonna come up with all at once because then I'm gonna get overwhelmed. I'm gonna start with one and then I'm gonna get another and another and I'm just gonna layer pattern after pattern after pattern all while try and figure out a way to use the surroundings to frame the character, look around the entire piece and always, always, always rendezvous back to the focus point. So there's a couple different ways to going about creating your own composition or your own patterns, if you will, to to make your piece interesting, to make the eye look around. And that's with like invisible subliminal lines, color and shapes. We're gonna have relationships between those things. So for example, with Melania here, you have quite a few. So obviously all the butterflies, because they are butterfly, the only thing that's like a vivid, more bubblegummy pink in this piece are gonna have relationships between all the butterflies because of their shapes and their color. And so they're all like dots that you connect. And so this is great, and I'll go into this later in lines, is that this creates kind of like a subliminal hidden line for your eyes to guide in too. So the butterflies kind of act as two things. They act, there's relationships between all the butterflies and they make an ellipse around Melania, which is, well, a compositional line that guides your eye. Other things that you have that have relationships between both the shape and the color are the buds. All these flower buds are gonna make you look around over here on the bottom side of the piece because you're gonna look at this one and then you're gonna look at this one and then you're gonna look at this one and then you're gonna look at this one. But what's cool because they're the same color as the cape. So they're gonna go make it to the cape. Oh no, look at that. They're also the same color as the hair. Oh, and look at that. The hair goes into the wings. Another relationship between objects are these funky things, mainly because of their shape and once again, the color. And so it's gonna make you look left and right and left and right and blah, blah, blah. They also have a relationship between themselves and Melania's entire body because they are the same color. It's the same like flesh skin tone color. So it's gonna make you look here and here and here and here and all over here and here. So relationships between shapes and color are great ways to get the viewer to look around the piece, to connect dots essentially, to see similarities and patterns. But also how you orient and lay down a foundation with hidden lines in your piece is so, so impactful on how someone consumes a piece of artwork. So we're gonna get into that in a pretty detailed measure and I hope you guys learned something about it because if you can get this down, this is the title of the video. This is what's really gonna upgrade your art. So the first thing I did is I, I want the composition to work with her pose. And the thing that worked with her pose so well is I have this like angle going on with her arm. With it, I'm gonna have the sword go this way. I'm gonna have it go behind her. And the reason why that's important is because it brings up to the arm right here to this arm, which then points down to the metal arm, which is a really big focus, right? So that is the thing. But also the orange, the, um, the sword goes behind her head, AKA it crosses over the focus point which is good, which is meaning that her pose alone, you have this infinity loop. So you, here's the focus point. Our eyes are drawn to it immediately. She's looking in this direction, which brings us to the arm. And then her arm goes down here, brings us to the sword. The sword comes up, crosses over the other arm, which then points back at the sword. So you have an infinity loop here, going this way, go this way, this way. But it keeps going over to the focus point and it just, starts this infinity triangle over and over and over again. 
So you have an infinity loop already. Right now with just the pose that I've chosen, I'm already getting kind of a composition that looks around the piece, or at least a part of the piece, and always rendezvous back to cross over to the face. Cool, so we have a compositional pattern seeking brain layer one. But that's still not good enough. We still wanna go around with more than that. So I have this nice curve here. I decided to make the elements of the composition work with that. So I continued it with this tree here and the foliage. And now I have this really cool kind of ellipse that is framing Melania. But what's even cooler about following this like line from the sword, by making the foliage follow it, it's reusing and re-overlapping frames that we already put down, such as how it's gonna go this way, which is gonna go into the sword, which is gonna split into this infinity loop, and it's gonna follow here. It's gonna keep going, and it's gonna split into the second infinity loop with the triangle. And because it's crossing over the focus point, that's awesome, but it's gonna keep on going, and we have enough information to fill in the blank off camera to have this entire thing be an infinity loop. Pattern seeking brain level compositional pattern two. See what we're doing here? We're not just drawing one thing that's pretty and then blurring out the rest to create depth. We're actually creating lines that make us see the focus point, look around the piece, see other secondary focus points. It's framing things so we look all around it here and then we, because this line is so obvious, we're gonna continue back and split off into those infinity loops which go back into the, the focus point of the piece. So we look around and come back. Look around, look around, look around, and come back, come back, come back. This is what good composition looks like. You want to find or you want to make something that is both pretty and expressive, but you want it to work for you. You also want it to have purpose. But that was only with two layers of like compositional lines. Like we could do better than that. Let's keep going. Let's see how far we can take this. I decided to use her great rune as a type of halo. I'm gonna have her off center to the halo. It's also gonna be off centered, but a little bit to the right instead of the left. So we're having a little bit of contrast for an interesting organization. We see an object in the background and it pops up to us because it's a negative space and it still goes over the focus point. Compositional pattern three. And what's cool about this too, generally the whole piece is leaning this way. And so I'm gonna follow that, that natural lean that's occurring with her wings. You already have a bit of another ellipse. And look at that, the wings, they cross over the focus point again. Another compositional pattern four. We also have the butterflies. So the butterflies, they're purposely meant to look a little scattered. And if I were to just dot all of these together, and then connect the dots. These also aren't just random. They're not just around to look pretty. They also are framing Melania. You have another ellipse framing her in a different direction. Compositional pattern five. And what's great about this is that if I were to highlight this angle, it's also following the same direction as where she's looking. One of the main reasons why this works really well is because when you have a consistency of like a whole piece going a certain direction, when you have something that kind of breaks that consistency, it stands out. It's not following the rule of the entire piece going in one direction. It's breaking that rule in a way that complements it and makes it pop. And it's all because it is doing the opposite of what the rest of the piece is doing, which is another reason why her focus point works so well because her head is facing in that perpendicular manner. You have this crisscross of like an X working for you. So you have this ellipse and you have this ellipse in a perpendicular manner. So technically, contrast number five with the butterfly is changing it up with the perpendicular lines kind of acts as a six as well. So what happens if I get rid of both of these frames? I am left with this. Look at that, that's all the important stuff of the piece. Everything in this purple area is less rendered because we want this to be more rendered and we want this to be the most rendered. So if you make everything a little less rendered in the places that aren't as important, then it incites depth. So there you have it. It went from something really basic, boring, one-to-one, -one, flat with the camera pose, to a really complex, interesting piece that you wanna look everywhere. And why do you wanna look everywhere? 
that's the reason why. Which is just absolutely nuts. There is so much going on in this piece compositionally wise. And you guys can make really interesting compositions too. There are a ton of composition templates, rule of thirds, the S formation that you see a lot in like movie posters or the front covers of books. There's like golden ratio. There's a ton that you could do research on, but as far as like understanding the basic principles of such a fundamental as composition, you need to understand there are invisible subliminal messages and lines and little patterns that all are meant to trick our eyes and our brains to look around. Because if you try to use those templates without understanding the true core reason of the fundamental, you're gonna be left in the dark. You're not gonna know what to do properly and everything. This is the foundation. This is how you understand how to use those templates. And what's great about the templates, such as the rule of thirds that I went over today, there's a million ways to go over it. It is not just one way, it's a billion. And you could come up with your own. So, thanks for watching. There's honestly a lot more I could go into this fundamental. I could go on for probably hours, not just like 15 minutes, so, let me know if you guys want to learn even more about composition. And if you liked this video or found it helpful at all, please think about maybe sharing it and maybe subscribing because I do want to post something like this once a month, give or take. So thanks guys. Thanks for sticking around. I know I've been gone for a really long time and this is a new type of media that I've never made before really. So it means a lot that you're here.